The characters of Halo do most of their negotiating with bullets and plasma charges, so it can be hard to see the big picture past all the smoking piles of Mjolnir armor and upturned warthogs. Halo's history is quite deep, and like the inverted planetoid the series is named after, has a way of repeating itself. There's no way we could cover all the films, novels, comics, and games that added chapters to Halo's grand story, but if you're looking to follow the fight into a new trilogy, this intel should prove useful. You can't imagine how exciting this is to have a record of all of our lost time. Human history, isn't it? Fascinating. Before humans, the Covenant, and even before the Flood, there were the Precursors, an ancient race of celestial travelers who built a galaxy-spanning empire. Their greatest legacy grew into a vast and powerful race known as the Forerunners. These beings took up their creator's mantle to observe and protect the universe. These events are told in the Forerunner Saga, a trilogy written by Greg Bear. Part 1, Cryptum, followed a young Forerunner named Born Stellar Makes Eternal Lasting. After landing on Earth, known to the Forerunners as Erd Tyrene, Born Stellar encountered two primitive humans who helped him to activate the cryptum of the warrior servant, known as the Didact. The Didact was placed in stasis for resisting the construction of the Halos, giant devices used to purge the galaxy of insurmountable threats. Born Stellar's enlightenment was short-lived, as cataclysmic events activated and destroyed nearly all of these antique doomsday devices. Born Stellar was able to escape the catastrophe aboard one of the few remaining rings, where he drifted towards the forerunner haven known as the Ark. Bear's second installment, Primordium, is slated for release in January of 2012. One hundred thousand years after the events of the Forerunner Saga, in the year 2525, human marines and colonists of the United States Space Command were first introduced to an alien collective known as the Covenant. While unluckily stationed at a human farming colony named Harvest, Staff Sergeant Avery Johnson and his old squad mate Nolan Byrne were unlucky enough to participate in the UNSC's earliest encounter with the Covenant research vessel. This chance meeting was chronicled in Contact Harvest, written by Joseph Staten. The Covenant was the result of a pact between several alien races, the Ungoy, known to the humans as Grunts, the Kegyar, or Jackals, the Megalagolo, or Hunters, the Huragok, or Engineers, the Jeralhane, or Brutes, the Anmei, or Drones, and the powerful Sanghili, or Elites. All of them fanatically worshipped the Forerunners as deities. They were led by the enigmatic San Shiyum, or Prophets. By setting a trap and ensnaring the Zealous Covenant, Johnson and the UNSC Marines on Harvest began a tragic battle that would escalate into an epic struggle between the two militant races. Your Prophets have promised you freedom from a doomed existence. While the Marines and Covenant missionary vessels were suitably distracted, three ambitious members of the San Shiyum took the opportunity to usurp power from the Covenant's current hierarchs by intercepting the Forerunner relics on Harvest. As the chain of events neared its climax, the brute Tartarus rose to take his uncle's place as chieftain amidst the chaos, while Johnson and the Marines fought a losing battle to repel the Covenant forces. The Prophets tragically discovered that the Forerunner relics the Covenant sought on Harvest were actually the human colonists themselves. Humans were the direct descendants of the Forerunners and the true Reclaimers. Eventually, Harvest was lost and evacuated. The Prophets returned to their people and rallied their fervor against humanity while stifling their true legacy as the Forerunners' children, knowing it would cause their entire belief system to crumble. They shed their old personas and emerged as the Prophets of Mercy, Truth, and Regret. Not long after the obliteration of Harvest, the UNSC attempted to investigate and retake the planet, instilling retired Vice Admiral Preston Cole back into the UNSC to lead the force. As shown in the comic book Halo Wars Genesis, Preston's fleet managed to clear the area around Harvest of invasive Covenant forces in 2526, but suffered great losses. After learning more of the Covenant through an elite captive in 2531, the UNSC Vice Admiral established the Cole Protocol in order to prevent the Covenant from discovering the location of any vital human settlements. The Protocol detailed emergency steps for all vessels to take in order to prevent important spatial data from being acquired by the Covenant, which included self-destruction. 
Standard orbit achieved. All systems normal. Early that same year, UNSC vessel Spirit of Fire was sent on a mission to recover another ship, the Prophecy, and uphold the Cole Protocol. After Captain James Cutter's team, led by Sergeant John Forge, investigated and attempted to evacuate the disabled Prophecy, Forge destroyed the ship and any information within. Xenobiologist Dr. Ellen Anders soon joined the ship's crew and warned Cutter of the vicious warlord known as the Arbiter, tasked by the Prophet of Regret with a special purpose. The Arbiter had discovered a forerunner ruin that led him and the Spirit of Fire to the human colony of Arcadia. While neutralizing the Covenant threat there, Dr. Anders was captured and taken to an uncharted planet teeming with insidious parasitic lifeforms called the Flood. The planet also housed a fleet of ancient forerunner vessels within its hollow core, which the Arbiter planned to activate and use to destroy humanity. Dr. Anders escaped, and Sergeant Forge selflessly destroyed the swarm of ships. In 2536, Commander Jacob Keyes of the UNSC Iroquois was sent to the Sigma Octanus system to quell a possible Covenant threat. Keyes expertly maneuvered the Iroquois through one of the first real victories against the Covenant. In 2552, the Office of Naval Intelligence decided to proceed with a secret mission involving a sect of super soldiers called Spartans. The Spartan II program had been in development by the UNSC since 2517 and attempted to create perfect machines designed for augmented combat. The Spartan II project was overseen by Dr. Catherine Halsey and involved a young Lieutenant Jacob Keyes. The Spartans were brutally trained on the planet Reach by Officer Franklin Mendez and proved their worth many times, including during the Battle of Arcadia. In 2525, the Spartans were sent to the planet Chi Seti IV to undergo a rigorous enhancement procedure. Dr. Halsey introduced the Spartans to their iconic Mjolnir Mark IV power armor, and the soldiers utilized their new weaponry in an attempt to commandeer a Covenant vessel and then use it to return to the Covenant homeworld and abduct one of their prophets. To assist the Spartans on this mission, an ingenious AI named Cortana was designed and modeled after Dr. Halsey. She was introduced to an exemplary soldier and pillar of the Spartan project, Master Chief John 117. John was inducted in 2517 at the age of six, awarded the Purple Heart for his valor in the Uriadnus system, and was a primary player in the Battle of Chiseti. The Spartans were boarded onto a customized Halcyon battle cruiser named the Pillar of Autumn, commanded by the newly promoted Captain Jacob Keyes. As the Pillar of Autumn prepared to make the slip space jump to initiate their mission, the system containing the planet of Reach was besieged by a Covenant fleet. A UNSC vessel docked near Reach, Circumference, failed to comply with the Cole Protocol. The Chief was sent to deal with it. As noted in the title of Eric Nyland's 2001 novel, The Fall of Reach, the battle for the colony was doomed. The Covenant eventually overran the surface of Reach despite the valiant efforts of Carter A259 and his noble team. With most of the fleet destroyed, Cortana established an emergency escape vector using data from a recovered artifact smuggled by three members of Noble Team, and the Pillar of Autumn vanished into slip space. The ship emerged before a vast forerunner artifact that the Covenant had been seeking, a halo. The Covenant eventually overcame the cruiser, and before Captain Keyes crashed the Autumn on Halo's surface, the Chief and Cortana jettisoned in an escape pod. After regrouping the surviving forces, Master Chief was introduced to the installation steward, 343 Guilty Spark, who revealed that the Covenant had inadvertently released their greatest parasitic foe. 343 almost forced the Chief to fulfill Halo's true purpose, the destruction of all life in the universe, including the Flood. After tragically losing Captain Keyes to the Flood's assimilation, they detonated the Pillar's remains and destroyed the Halo. Master Chief and Cortana were able to hijack the Covenant flagship Ascendant Justice with the help of other survivors and return to Reach's solar system. In order to uphold the Cole Protocol, Master Chief decided to return to Earth in a suitable human ship and in the process of finding one discovered survivors on the surface of Reach, among them Dr. Halsey. Cortana unearthed vital intel that the Covenant had discovered the location of Earth and were planning a full-scale assault. 
The chief led an attack on a Covenant station before salvaging the UNSC ship Gettysburg and heading home. This narrow triumph is the center of another Nightland novel, First Strike. Meanwhile, the Covenant were greatly displeased with the Halo's destruction. As a precious piece of Forerunner technology, it was greatly prized by the Covenant and factored into a revelatory Armageddon the Covenant called the Great Journey. For failing to stop the humans, a powerful elite warrior was tortured by the brute chieftain Tartarus and bestowed the mantle of Arbiter in hopes of redemption. During the Arbiter's trials, the Covenant fleet began to approach Earth, led by the Prophet of Regret. The UNSC was able to fend off most of the attack, but the Prophet of Regret's flagship survived the encounter and made a hasty retreat. Master Chief and Cortana, along with Captain Key's daughter Miranda and Ascendant Justice survivor Sergeant Johnson, was able to tail the Prophet's escape into slipspace, emerging before a second massive halo, Installation 5. Master Chief searched for the Prophet of Regret, while Keyes and Johnson attempted to locate this new Halo's index. I bet the Covenant are thinking the exact same thing. Although Master Chief was successful in slaying the Prophet, the Covenant soon arrived and blasted the Chief down to the surface below. During the aftermath of the Prophet of Regret's escape, a daring squad of orbital drop shock troopers assigned to a fairly standard mission ended up making an important discovery for the UNSC. The ragtag squad was separated by the shock wave the Prophet's slipspace jump created, and while attempting to regroup, encountered a Covenant Huragok, or engineer, who possessed a wealth of Covenant secrets and wanted to defect to humanity. The Huragok, along with the ODSTs, were eventually recovered by Sergeant Johnson. Excellent work, Arbiter. The Hierarchs will be pleased. After the death of the Prophet of Regret, inner turmoil within the Covenant led to dissension and confusion. The Brutes soon replaced the Elites as the protectors of the Hierarchs, and both Master Chief and the Arbiter soon encountered each other within the domain of the creature Gravemind, the Overmind of the Flood on Installation 5. Gravemind sent Master Chief to destroy the Covenant vessel carrying the Prophet of Truth, while the Arbiter was tasked with shutting down the Index. The Arbiter defeated the insane Tartarus, but deactivating the Halo didn't disable its function. Instead, it placed all of the remaining Halos in the galaxy in a standby mode that could only be activated remotely from a place 343 Guilty Spark referred to as the Ark. The fate of Master Chief and the Prophet of Truth is told in a four-part comic series called Uprising, written by Brian Michael Bendis from 2007 through 2009. Still aboard the Forerunner vessel with the Prophet of Truth, Master Chief was soon overwhelmed by the Covenant, taken captive, and interrogated. He eventually escaped, but the Prophet fled from the ship. Not being able to alter the course of the Prophet's vessel, Master Chief used a scrap of it as a heat shield and fell into Earth's atmosphere. Weary Spartan was discovered in the jungles of eastern Africa by Sergeant Johnson and the Arbiter, and the three retreated through amassing Covenant forces to the haven of a UNSC outpost. The human forces at the outpost, including Miranda Keys, decided to make a fatal strike at the Prophet of Truth, who returned to Earth to activate a Forerunner artifact. The attack failed, and the Prophet was able to activate the artifact and teleport away. However, thanks to a message from Cortana found on a downed ship infested by the Flood, the team was able to follow the Prophet of Truth to the fabled Ark. A captive Sergeant Johnson was forced to activate the rings, and Miranda sadly perished in an attempt to rescue him. With the help of the Flood, the Prophet of Truth quickly fell, and just as quickly, Gravemind betrayed Master Chief and the Arbiter and unleashed his infectious army. In order to destroy Gravemind's infestation without activating all the Halos, Master Chief decided to detonate a Nashant Halo that the Ark was constructing to replace the first Halo Master Chief destroyed. After a second, unfortunate clash of logic with its AI, 343 Guilty Spark, the Halo exploded, eradicating the Flood infestation. Master Chief and the Arbiter, leaving a fatally wounded Sergeant Johnson behind, narrowly escaped the blast on the ship forward onto Dawn. The cruiser ended up being sundered in two as it ripped through the slipspace portal. The 
the Arbiter was safe, while Master Chief was left in the ship's rear half, which remained drifting through uncharted space. Believing John 117 to be dead, the UNSC memorialized him, and the Arbiter returned to his homeworld. Although Cortana released a distress signal, the duo realized their chances of rescue were slim. The only thing they could do was sleep and wait. This was just a sample of Halo's rich lore, and now that Halo 4 will usher in a new trilogy, these memories might serve as the precursor to the greatest conflict yet. For an AI and a soldier with no face, Cortana and Master Chief have told their stories admirably. Behind Cortana's feisty quips and the Chief's plated exterior stands a duo that has yet to find its equal in the universe. Bungie has trained its armies well, and its fans will faithfully follow the series to whatever frontier the future holds.